Hey, welcome back to Minus Letter Live for this Friday, July twenty six. I think it's seven, Ed. Twi I'm looking. Oh, at, I'm looking at the clock, and it I, says well, seven. Yeah, but you know what? There was a day recently that had twenty six on it. Even a bloken bloken <laughs> clock is right twice in the delay. Bloken, <laughs> broken clock. Bloken. Yes. Ed, now did you have you taken your cannabinoids today? Have you? Uh, <laughs> I can tell you got that smile on your face. Is that a bit of a smirk? <laughs> well, it's like. Is it a smile or is it a smirk? You're, you're happier than normal. Although you're generally yeah, pretty, pretty happy. happy. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, today we have Sean Dollinger from Namaste. He's going to be here with us in a couple of minutes. We have Dustin B. Marshall, but you're not going to see him today. You're going to see him on Monday, but we just shot a thing with him in California. Small technical difficulties prevent us from giving it to you today. So. We're going to talk about Sean Dollinger, Namaste. We're going to talk about some charts here. We're going to talk about the charts here, and uh, Ed's going to give you some analysis on well, the charts. Well, we're having a green day today. Whoa! Wait he's starting minute. with the analysis right away. I'm just saying, <laughs> the subject's green. Whoa! And the direction's green. green. <laughs> Whoa, that's a double tsunami of wonderful news. Whoa! Boy, I tell you, those uh, 2.5 milligram THC pills, they're something else. No, they're CBD, aren't they? 2.5 milligrams C CBD, 2.5 milligrams THC. They're combos? Yeah, they're a double barrel shot. It's the entourage effect in full, full regalia. That's why you feel so good. That's why this show is going to be so awesome. Let's see. There's not even any cannabis news to be had today. No news? No news is good news. Let's take a look at the index. Oh, you want to take a look is at that, the index? Is that too early? No, I think we could go start right with the index. Wow. Let's Holy see. smokes. Oh. Cannabis. Stock quotes. Look at that. Where are we here? Let's see, I think we need to go over here. I Boy, think it's up today. What? Cannabis? The index. The index. Oh my oh. god, look at look at this. Look at this. Spinning wheel. Let's go to the index page. What do we got here? At full oh. screen. Whoa! Well, that's, that's, that's kind of alarming. Let's, let's go down to the one day. Look, what's happening to our index? What, what, what happened here? Did no, you make an adjustment? Another no, adjustment? no, no. I think that's just some error in the... Uh, error? Looks like some kind of error because here we are at the one day and... Uh, this is the one day? Sure enough, yeah. It's up slightly. Is Look it? at that. Volume zero, it says. Okay, we know that's not accurate. But uh, yeah, what do we got here? Wow, look at this. Look at her. Oxley up 5% to 84 cents. Afria up 4.59%. This, this is one frothy market, Ed. Look at this thing. I know, look it's at this thing. It's taken on a life of its own. Two million shares traded. Afria's up. Up, up, and away. Up, up, and away. Aurora's up 3% on wow 11.9 million shares we'll call that can trust is up like everything's up today it's nice it, it was getting a little oversold that's what i would say and, and you know when it after a while it has to come back because there's such a what goes up must come down and, and the, the shorts get nervous and they start to cover huh is that what happens there yeah all right that's pretty smart that sounds pretty smart to me i don't know if it makes any sense but it sounds smart um, fundamentally, what do you see happening in the cannabis space right now? Well, that's your, uh, that's your... <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, you're supposed to ask me that. <laughs> well, let me no. tell you, Ed, since you asked, fundamentally, Friday, I guess, uh, I, you know what I think it is, that all the sellers have uh, gone away for the weekend. It's only buyers who are left. Just buyers? Well, it looks like more buyers than sellers. No, actually, look at this. It's down. The index is down 10%. I, I, don't, I don't agree with that. This is this seems off. But uh, something's wrong. If all the stocks are up and your index is down, <laughs> <laughs> that's a hell of an index. It's quite okay. okay. Look at this: one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight out of ten large cap stocks are up, and our index is showing it as a ten percent down day. Yeah, good index. Good index, yeah. guys. Okay, way to go, guys. I think we need our money back from Quote Media. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, we won't. Uh, we won't jump to that. Oh, I, I get it. Know. That green organic Dutchman is down at penny. That's bringing it way down, like that ten percent. You think? <laughs> a 
no, is that so? That's the index that relates to this. Yeah, I, I don't think we can put that on the screen anymore. It just it doesn't look right. It's telling a fib. It's telling a fib. We have to get our uh, like look at this. What's this little red blotch doing down here? Somebody came down here and took a dump on the sidewalk by the looks of things. Like where? What? Where? Right down here. Look at that. that little it looks thing. like this thing dropped by a thousand points for fifteen minutes. Five. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> Doesn't make sense. So yeah, the uh, the news of the day is that over at Midas Letter, Ed and Jim, financial engineering sleuths that they are, have just determined that their index is faulty, and therefore will be not referred to until we can be certain until the that faults it's have back. been corrected. Exactly, exactly. So <laughs> we've probably been. <laughs> Basically, giving away a bunch of bad analysis over the last week, and well, uh, well, I don't what can know. I say? You no, get what you pay no, for. No, no. <laughs> such it's thing the pattern as, that's important. There's no such thing as bad analysis. All there's analysis not? is good. What about wrong analysis? Uh, what about uh, what about uh, wrong analysis? Wrong analysis. Wrong analysis has definitely got to be not what people are after. Uh, I'm, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna put that out there. I'm assuming. You know the you know the word, and I'm just going to throw this out here because I just had a, you know, a, a flash. The it's word tsunami? the word therapist, therapist, therapist is comprised of two words. Okay, what are they, Ed? The rapist. Oh. I know, oh, I know. That's your Friday afternoon joke. It's not a joke. That's what I got going into the weekend. I know. It's just it's just <laughs> something to think about. Well, go you see, think about it. I'm not thinking about rapist. it. Go see the Go see the Go see the rapist. I'm feeling glum. I think I should be No, this is just this is just a you know, wrong no, conversation. Okay, okay, okay. I know. It's terrible, but Let's try to keep it cannabis, shall right, we, Ed? Right. We're not going to Dr. Gonna Ruth sued. anything. I'm going to probably here. get sued by the Canadian Therapist Soft. Society. Soft. Yeah, well, there you go. And just so that the therapy society knows Ed's opinions are his own and are no way shared by his partner on the other side of the table. Anyway. I think that's a fair I'm sense. just pointing out some things. I'm not making a comment. Yes, you are. Okay. Yes, you are. Anyway, so, uh, big yeah, sir, sir, there's that big sir coming back. S-U-R. Big sir. Yeah. Oh, you Have said you yes, you are. Yeah. I think you just said S-U-R. <laughs> sir. Ed, this is... <laughs> This is this is confusing Friday, we'll call okay, it. Okay, we'll call it. Did you know last night was a full moon? Yes, I did. How did you know? Do you feel the urge to howl at about midnight? Do you know the word lunatic is derived from the same word lunar? Because if you look at a full moon, you become a lunatic. I s is that? Lu what? I'm not, I'm, that's, tr that's no a fact. No kidding. That's a fact. Wow. That's and, impressive. And, but also... You know, the, the word to describe uh, uh, anything to do with a wolf is lupine. Huh. Lupine. You, know, you don't like, say. Oh. <laughs> All right. You're so barking at the moon. Let's say hello to Were our regular guests here on... Uh, Fr fun, fun Friday. Fun fr our Fun Friday. Hello to our usual suspects on the viewing side on YouTube. Waiting in Weed says, Happy Friday, gents. Happy Friday to you, Waiting in Weed. System deadlock. I saw on that show, Cooking on High, that CBD actually sobers you up and gets you unhigh. True or false? Eh, I'd say false. Yeah. We should have, that's what we should do. We should have statements and then we, we, we decide whether they're true or false, like a little... Well, but to check that out, we'd actually have to get high and then consume some CBDs and you'd have to get unhigh faster than you would normally get unhigh if you just stopped smoking weed in order for that to be true. Now, if it was false, yeah. the placebo effect might kick in. We, we could have a few statements made, and we could say true or false. Like, for instance... We're doing it right now. Uh, <laughs> there you go. We're making them up on the fly. Well, I, I'm, is, pick, I'm picking know, this up real fast. This is, this is fresh food we're serving here. Fresh none food. Of this, none of this pre-packed frozen TV dinner variety, mm -hmm. no. Mm -hmm. All right. Modern Picasso has raised a bottle of champagne in our honor in an emoticon, and we really appreciate the emotive sentiment. However... Our preference would always be to actually have a real have a got, champagne. You know what? I love the champagne. Are, are you <laughs> I love champagne, too. I don't now, like what, to pay 300 like, bucks a bottle. Well, well, then you buy Prosecco. Prosecco's not really champagne. Yeah, but, but it tastes, some of it, some of the taste tests you have shown. champagne bottle. And some of the taste tests have shown people actually prefer Prosecco to champagne. Really? Yeah. 
Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Well, exactly. So what, if I told you it was champagne and you drank it and you like it, you'd say, wow, that's great champagne. I, you know, I would. Could be I, carbonated. I doubt I could tell the difference be between Prosecco and champagne. You probably can't tell the difference between 7-Up and champagne. <laughs> <laughs> between 7-Up and champagne? Come on. No, I think I, I think I got that down. You know what we should do? Next what? week we're going to... Uh, we're going to give that a taste test. We're going to bring in some champagne. I think we should. And some Prosecco. And we're and going to we see won't, we won't. who can actually we'll have Suzanne. Correctly. We'll have Suzanne. Judging. Actually, Reffing. let's do it with vodka because everybody <laughs> tells me they can taste the difference between vodkas. Well, but nobody can. How many vodkas are we going to sample? Mm, let's see. If we only do an ounce per sample, let's do no more than, say, 30. <laughs> <laughs> 30 ounces. And then we'll start the show. That'll be great. The show's not going to last long. That'll be great. You know, it's really frowned upon in uh, professional news and this kind of thing in the broadcast world to right. to conduct yourself in any way high or drunk. It's it's just considered not done. And I think that's because most people, you know, they get there's an irreversible sort of slight twist of the personality that occurs under any influence of alcohol or cannabis. But I'm thinking, except for I just got something in my eye. Uh, cannabis, like generally I can smoke or eat some cannabis and conduct a reasonably yeah. entertaining sort of Q&A with somebody who's equally as stoned. <laughs> like huh? yourself, for example. What? <laughs> Wake up, man! <laughs> Did I put you to sleep there? Was that question too long? Am I speaking in tongues? you speaking in tongues? <laughs> Have you, have you ever heard anybody speak in tongues before? I have. I just did. <laughs> that was not actually speaking no, in tongues. No, Can you do it. an imitation of somebody speaking in tongues? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like you after 30 vodkas. <laughs> is, is that why people ignore me sometimes? Well, because they can't understand you. <laughs> <and> they, <laughs> they smile politely at you and then back away, you know, keeping speaking their eyes on you. Speaking in tongues. Speaking I know some people tongues. that are, well, I don't eat. Supposedly, that's a religious thing, right? Speaking in tongues. So we got to be careful. There. You got to be very careful. All like, and I'm, you know what? You're not a religious guy. Not really. You speak in tongues. I used to. You I, speak in. I saw. I heard you speaking in tongues last night. Last night, night <laughs> I was speaking in tongues. That's, you well, should have saw me around nine thirty. I was really speaking well, in tongues. That's when I last saw you. Yeah, well, you saw my. Uh, no, actually, that was around six thirty last night. Ten after six, I left for that costume party and i yep. think i sent you a pic of me yeah as a ghostbuster did, did, can we get that picture up in the sound room somehow suzanne can you send it to fraser i, I sent it to show suzanne. ed in his I costume said, yeah let's i think we should i think it's, yeah. it's an see. example of what we do at night it's the it's the unplanned control room challenge from the floor yeah wow should, see this and is this drives this drives fraser crazy sometimes you think this is it minus letter raw minus letter raw Drawl. Raw. Drawl. Anyways, while they're getting that organized, okay. Ed, do you know we got some new hosts coming on the show now? We're going to have some more shows. Should I be nervous? No, you should, no, you should not be nervous. How could, I can't even imagine you being... Okay, let's see you be nervous. <gasps> <laughs> You're speaking in tongues again. I said be nervous. A lot of countries, and, and they have that separate little that tongue thing in it. You know what happened? <laughs> so you're breaking yourself when up you, now. That's, you, also when, that's also frowned upon know, in professional news You can't, you can't laugh at your own jokes. Well, news guys aren't supposed to be laughers. Laughers? Laughers. Wasn't he a famous economist? Laugher? Laugher. Never heard of him. Clapper? <laughs> no, Clapper's in the current government as the Minister of, uh, or the Department of Defense, is it? Is Clapper, James Clapper. No, Dennis, Dennis Hopper. Dennis Hopper, actor. Not a clapper. Not a clapper. Hopper. Hopper. Actor. Bit of a hopper. Not a clapper. All right. We, let's try to have some serious news okay, now. Okay, let's, let's say something... Uh... Intelligent. <laughs> let's try. Well, we can't use our, we can't use no, our uh, indexes. No, it turns no. out they're wrong. In, indices. Indi, in, indici? Indices. 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 Hmm. In, you know what? When you, you when, can't say when, indexes? When you're swimming in the ocean, you're indices. Yeah. <laughs> 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 boom. Good one. Oh boy. Good one. Oh okay, boy. Oh so boy. we got guests on here. Oh, there, so there it is. There it is. There's the. Uh, oh, wait. here is the Ed. There, there's the outfit of the night. I was out. They called me to this Who are you party. Call? They called me to this party. They said we've got we've got a, a, a rumor of a ghost 
floating around. They said, can you get rid of it? I said, I'll be right over. So this is what you do. You this moonlight is, as a Ghostbuster? I, I, I moonlight as a Ghostbuster. Huh, excellent. Look at this. Good oh. work there in the control room. Yeah. Yeah. For, well done. Well, I know who I'm going to call. Who are you going to call? Ghostbusters. No, I'm going to call Special Ed. Who do they, what do you mean, who am I going to call? Who else would I call? You okay. look like you've got a stern look on your face, though, in that picture. Uh, I, I'd say stone look. Stone look. So yeah. this was after a consumable of edible. Somebody uh, there had uh, had some uh, edibles. Oh. And they edible were, vegetables. No, little like jelly beans. Oh. And they were. R <laughs> <laughs> Here we go, speaking in tongues again. Arr. And we're gonna have to put a cattle prod under the table and like. <sighs> Whoa! What was I saying? <laughs> then I'll really smile. <laughs> yeah, can you turn up the voltage a okay. little, please? I'm getting used to that. <laughs> Anyways, uh, turn up the voltage. So now I'm please. wondering if any of our stocks are even oh. accurate. Okay, let's let's. Well, I'll be this able is, to tell. This is this is Insane Friday. Hey, did you see this piece we published on? Our I think which Friday should be Insane Fridays from now well, on. Well, you know, we're going to have Mac Daddy Market making Donnie Greco on the show. Oh my God, when? Mid August, he's going to start coming on. Right I don't know, early. intermittently. Well, 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 and if he does all right, you know, we'll keep him. Yeah. And if he doesn't, give him a trial run. We'll throw him under the bus. Yeah. Or out the window. <laughs> at the window. At the window, Donnie. If you're watching, we're going to throw you out the window. Donnie. Yeah. Looking so, forward to uh, having a beer with you later. And sooner, sooner than later. Yeah, you can't make beer dates on the show. I why, mean, why not? Because it's like, every what about everybody else? You're just going to invite one person for a beer. I think the rule has to be: if you're going to discuss having a beer with one person through our medium here, you're going to have to invite everybody who's in the audience to wherever you're going, and you're going to have to disclose where you're going so they can show up there, and you have to buy them beer. <laughs> How about that? Did you hear that? Hey, How God. about that, audience? Who likes that? Funny, unfortunately, I can't see you for a while. Give us a thumbs up if you like that in the comments section. And we'll be at John and Sons at 5 o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. We just committed to that. Anybody shows up at John and Sons at 5 o'clock, we'll it's, buy them a beer. There's a sign, actually. Many, there's a sign in, in John and Sons. A little free advertising here. There's a blackboard there, and it says, free beer tomorrow. That, you know, I've been watching that sign every day. Free beer tomorrow. I go back every day and the guy says, take a look at the sign. Yeah. I said, what? Free beer tomorrow? He yeah. said, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay, okay. Modern Picasso is suggesting that we do a blind taste test with Tito's, Grey Goose, Belvedere, Absolute, and Smirnoff. Now, I would add Chopin to the mix. You know what? You know what? They did one on, uh, they did one on 60 Minutes, and you know what the... The, and I don't know which ones they had, but they had high price Blind ones. taste test with vodka. Blind, yeah. And you know which one that was how many vodkas picked? did they have on sixty minutes? At sixty minutes, yeah. But they, they 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 did they did a study because they're saying that basically vodka is odorless and colorless, and the most odorless and most colorless has the best taste. Well, that's almost an oxymoron. A contradiction in terms contradiction is what that terms. would be classified. And they as. said they said the one that was picked the most. More than not was Smirnoff's. Yeah. Smirnoff, really. We hear, we're hearing yuck, yuck from yeah, the control and, and, and if you Which add vodka anything you to prefer? vodka, you know I don't what? care. You I know? don't care. Here's, guess I what, buy drink? the cheapest one at the, at the bar. I say, really? I'll, I'll the cheapest, please. You're, so you're a cheap date guy. It's not that Give I'm a the cheapest. No, no, some things I don't. Do you want to know what I order when I go to the bar <clears> in, uh, in Vancouver because they don't generally have it around here? Tito's. Double absolute mandarin soda, small glass, lots of ice, twisted lime on the side. Can you tell I'm drinking any of those? Let's try that again. Double absolute mandarin soda, small glass, lots of ice, twisted lime on the side. Double absolute. See? Mm. <laughs> Clearly that's not what you drink. No, no, that's not what I drink. So that's how I can tell if people are actually. Are you, are you really fussy do. about that drink? Is that does that? Uh, well, I used to. Uh, I used to. You know, I used to. I'm Irish, half Irish and half Latvian. So we've got at the least Irish, the three Irish livers. The Irish like to drink. Well, we have. We're, every Irishman's born with three livers, don't you know? Three. It is true. That's Tis. why we're lucky, and we can drink like do fishes you, without you, making you, a mess of ourselves. Do you think? Do you think that? Makes oh, sense. we're going to do the Irish accents now, are we, Ed? I don't think I'm, we I'm thinking. I'm thinking we should. <laughs> you're going to morph into a Newfie accent, and then you're going to have all the Newfies on the East Coast I, up in arms. I taught. No. You, you were thinking. <laughs> I taught. You Boy. were thinking. 
What? Okay. So let's look at some charts. All right. No. No, no. the charts are no good. No, no, no. The, 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 oh, Bobby the, Mullins is here. Hey, Bobby. How you doing? Bobby. Bobby. Bobby boy. Bobby. Did you hear that? We're going to be at John and Sons later on. Free drinks. Free drinks. Free what drinks. You, whoa, wait a sec. Wait a sec. Whoa, soft. Whoa. Soft. Whoa. How many seats, how many seats in John and Sons? Eh. How many, how many total capacity would you say? Including the ones that are under them? <laughs> Just in, a, in the normal course of business, what's the most people that place can hold? 46. 46. How much do you think each guy who would show up for free drinks could drink at each In that station? place? Yeah. Probably no more than a, a bottle. Okay, and so vodka. we're going to test six vodkas with everybody. Oh yeah, that by the way, if you show up, you have to do no. the six vodka taste test. Are we doing that tonight? Why not? Do you got something? Got somewhere to be at? <laughs> I thought I, I thought I did. <laughs> you might want to keep keep a tight hold on those cannabinoid pills. Is what Ooh. you might want to do. Anyways, uh, yeah, cannabis changed your life, Ed. Yes. Yes. Me too. Me too. For the better or for the worse? Well, I. I I would have to say for the better, unequivocally, yeah. unequivocally, without exception, for the better. You, you know what's kind of nice about these edibles and things? You don't, you don't get the, uh, the sort of the stigma of smoking like this. You know, smoking is, you know. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, there is, I was with a guy down in California last week who ate two 15 milligram THC bombers and then did a big giant hit of shatter out of a glass bowl and I was just like, Boy, just getting ready for work, are you? <laughs> and he said yes. And he said, yeah, that's pretty yeah, much it. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be yeah. interviewed on the Midas Letter show. Yeah, yeah. So uh, that, was, that was quite a revelation. <clears throat> the one thing I've noticed is that my tolerance level goes down with age. So I used to be able to smoke, you know, five fatties in a row and still be able to hold a conversation. Now I have one puff off of a really decent... I think that has something to do with the, the, uh, the concentration of the, I think... The strains that are developed now are much more potent than the ones that well, it's obviously we cut a our teeth of on. THC and well, and CBD to a lesser and, extent. And is, it, is that the only two things that we're concerned about? Is THC and CBD? Well, some people like to argue with you about the terpenes in the in the you know. That's where you, terpenes are used to make terpene time. Well, there's all these constituent parts. Terpene time. Did anybody get that terpene time? <laughs> I think that we already run that joke, Ed. One joke, only, you can only run the same joke once every 50 shows. That's the new rule. What do you think? Is that a good rule? Although, no, that wasn't the one you, you were telling me. It was the other one. Never mind. We're not going there. Bobby Mullins says he's on BC CBD now, and we look great. Oh, oh thanks, Bobby. Thank you, Bobby. We feel great, too. Next week, I'll try on CBD to see if you look better or worse. I guess... It's the BC versus Ontario CBD Midas Letter Raw TV Beauty Contest. I think you might be onto something. I think we might be onto something. A beauty contest, Ed. We should have our first one right now, you and me. Ready? On mark, set, go. All right, the votes are coming in. The phones are ringing off the hook. It's Ed, it's Jim, it's Ed, it's James, it's Ed, it's James. Oh, it's a tie. Oh, it's a tie. We're apparently tie. equally as beautiful. Ah, the pulchritude. So nice. You know the word pulchritude? Pulchritude? Pulchritude. Spell that for me, will you? P-U-L-C-H-R-I-T-U-D-E. Wow, pulchritude. Pulchritude. That's an intriguing... I, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a word you'd never... Tell, now, now, okay. now you've got my full undervalued so, What is that? Must be the word of the day. Pulchritude, as in you're the epitome of feminine pulchritude. The, the epitome, epitome of feminine. Of fe that feminine. Feminine. <laughs> oh, that feminine. Right. Interesting. Yeah, to be to Feminine. have the, the but quality you of you just described the pul pulchritude. It, so it's, it's the a quality synonym. being feminine. No, it's the synonym for beauty. But beauty is not necessarily restricted to the feminine. No, but I'm just saying, you, as in this is an ex example. Like you, you can say to a let's say you're walking down the street, you see a, 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 a lovely Here's looking lady. You'd say you're the epitome the of feminine pulchritude. 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 Suzanne, you are the epitome of feminine pulchritude. There you go. There you go. Exactly. She's got a sign. It says, fix your collar at least, please. Oh, yeah. You're, Stupid you're, stick. No, she's talking to me. Yeah, she's talking to you. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, there we go. Is that, okay, how's so, that look? so it looks, uh, you know. You're supposed to keep an eye out for these things, Ed. <laughs> Don't speak in tongues again. Hola, hola, Come on, hola, we got a show to do okay. here. Hey, you want to talk to uh, Sean Dollinger? Would you mind if I had a word with Sean Dollinger alone, if you don't mind? You know what? I think it's, uh, I, I would have, yeah, go right ahead. Sean, can I see you in the kitchen, please? Okay. Hey, welcome back to Midas Letter Live. My guest this segment is Sean Dollinger, President and CEO of Namaste Technologies. Sean, welcome back. Thank you very much for having us. Sean, your company never, never ceases to su surprise me. And uh, again, you've done it. You, you're moving to the NASDAQ. Like, that's incredible. Yeah, no, it's a great accomplishment. We uh, went ahead and announced it earlier in the week. Mm. Uh, we've met all the criteria. As you know, we have our live show uh, once, a, once a week on uh, Namaste 420. I've watched it. And, um, you know, on there, we went ahead a, a couple months back and said we'd do everything in our power to get qualified for it. The one thing that we left up to our shareholders and investors jokingly, was uh, the share price, mm -hmm. you know? And there's been a lot of talk these days on a consolidation because that's all that's missing for us to be able to move up to the NASDAQ. Hmm. Interesting. Okay, so then what, uh, I mean, your, your share price requires a consolidation to go to NASDAQ, but what other compelling logic is there to be on NASDAQ? So we believe that it opens up a whole new world of institutions. For example, a lot of institutions won't do OTCQB. Right now, <clears throat> Namaste, it's loved by its shareholders and investors. We love it. Like the feedback we get. It's you have more viewers on your videos every Wednesday than we have a, on our show every day. So it's like, yes, they obviously love you. It's, a, it's amazing how engaged and it feels yeah. so incredible, yeah. you know. Um, but at the same time, for our shareholders and investors, what we've worked so hard for is building this amazing company, the most exciting company out there in our opinion, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody's our partners in probably the most exciting space out there. Right, and didn't you start as a US online vape vendor? Originally, yes, and then we looked for opportunities globally for the FX conversion to be able to really take advantage of global markets. Mm -hmm. And that's what allowed us to become the largest business to consumer vaporizer company in the world. Hmm. Interesting. So what exactly is your availability of products in the United States at this point? So in the US, we've completely divested all of our assets and we've become so much more. So what happens is when companies grow, right, you start off as this vaporizer company or a vaporizer manufacturer, and that's great. But we want people to really understand where your everything canvas store. You want vaporizers, you want CBD, you want cannabis. Wow, everything. everything. I like that. The Amazon of cannabis. People have referred to us as Namazon. So. Namazon, whoa, <laughs> yeah, I can see it. Huh, that's interesting. Well, um, so then if you've di divested everything in the U.S., how are you going to sort of take advantage of that opportunity when the time comes? Yeah, so right now we are the largest, for example, in the U.K., Australia. We, comp we control 90% of site traffic in mm. Australia for our division. Really? So basically, oh. when we started introducing cannabis and CBD, so in Canada, we saw there was a problem with people going out and getting their medical license. You need mm -hmm. to leave your house, you need to go see a doctor, maybe there's a line, maybe they cancel your appointment, maybe you don't get approved. We developed Namaste MD. It's the first telemedicine app ever approved in the Apple Store for cannabis in Canada. And within 10 minutes, you could go ahead, get on, get connected to a nurse practitioner, and then complete your shopping experience in Canada and get it delivered to your doorstep within four hours. Whoa, that is, uh, that is scary. I mean, it's still not quite as quick as the illegal dispensaries, but it's getting there. <laughs> in your opinion, with the uh, legalization of Canada in Canada for rec purposes in October, do you see that finally taking a big impact, impactful bite out of the illicit market, as it's going to be called? You would think that the uh, government needs to do that. We've spent millions of dollars, right, on legality, going through the process, buying product the way they require it. How could they not? It wouldn't do justice. Right, right. So in California right now, the, uh, the state has 
started enforcement of their very tough pesticide rules and such a large number of California growers can't comply with the pesticide standards that the supply of and variety of cannabis in all the dispensaries in California is under a huge squeeze. And uh, so there's only like 25% of MedMen's normal product line is actually available right now. Wow, um, do you think that's something that is at risk of happening in the Canadian market at all? So I think because Canada took the responsible steps of making it federally legal across Canada and set this framework that we've now been in, right, for many years, mm -hmm. you would know better than I on the exact number of years, but we've, st <laughs> <laughs> but we've started off with a great foundation. In mm -hmm. any business, you need to start with a great foundation. And I right. think Health Canada has done it. And I think that they're scaling properly. And from our communication and our talks with them, we really believe that, uh, the, that we shouldn't see that problem. Cool. So what is, uh, what is on the horizon for Namaste? How are you going to keep surprising us? Oh, boy, that's a big one. So uh, we're obviously working extremely hard on all new technology through our AI and machine learning portals. So to keep going ahead with that. But even on our show, for example, we went ahead and we were the first ones ever, as far as everybody you know, who I speak with, where we came up with this voluntary volunteer pledge yeah, from all of our- Yeah, that sounds interesting. Tell us about that. So uh, you know, I was on one of our live shows and we were under a short attack. And uh, it's, uh, you know, I think there was an article not too long ago, even in the Globe and Mail on shorting in the cannabis space. Mm -hmm. So we decided to take this pledge against that. And I said, hey, I have 20 million freely traded shares. I'm the largest shareholder. I'm going ahead and I'm not selling. Then Corey, who you've met, he turns to the camera and says 7 million. 48 hours later, we had 50% of our float pledged not to. And then about a week later, we said, and we made a commitment to everybody, that after the 90 days, we'd have a big pledge party where everybody would come together and uh, celebrate basically uh, sticking together. Right. That's interesting. So, yeah. That's great. So, uh, well, that's, that's incredible. But what else, what else is going to happen for Namaste on the uh, sort of developmental timeline that we can look forward to? So we're really, really close to finally getting our sales license, which everybody needs to understand. It's the first time that a company's really gone about it the way we have, mm -hmm. where we're not mm -hmm. a cultivator. We're going ahead and getting our sales license. So I think it's really important for you to watch out for that. Okay. Um, and then I think that it's uh, going to be great to uh, start launching some sites that could appeal to the rec space as well, because as we're seeing, there are certain provinces that are going to be allowing uh, rec to be sold online. Hmm. Interesting. Do you think it's just a matter of time till all of Canada sort of loosens up and makes it easier to get cannabis? I mean, they've got to compete with these guys in the illicit market who will deliver a bag in, you know, an hour. Yeah. So... I think on that front, though, on the medical side where we're really remaining focused with the tools like Namaste MD to allow the shopping experience to be with ease, even on the alcohol front, we still see, and alcohol has been around a long time, uh, that it's still province by province. Mm -hmm. uh, on the medical side of things, we're able to remove those boundaries. So Namaste, due to being an online portal and wanting to offer all Canadians equal opportunity to all cannabis mm -hmm. through our platform and through the tools that's what makes us different we'll be able to go ahead and offer everybody's product on our platform not just a single provider well wow, fantastic all right tell you what sean let's leave it there we'll come back to you soon thanks so much for the update hey thank you very much for having us on Welcome back, everybody. What did you think of Sean? Quite an impressive fellow. That's interesting. They got their whole uh, insider crew, or a, they got 140 million shares worth of their outstanding stock to pledge to not sell it till after the consolidation. Uh, and they're listing on NASDAQ. I think that's, that's like, wow. Wow. That's like big wow. Anyways, uh, I, I want to know, since we uh, have come back here, that uh, this fellow modern Picasso, I think we might know who we might know this person because they just said in the chat window on YouTube, "I'll make reservations on Open Table at John and Sons." Really? I think we're having our first Midas Letter video channel meetup. I'll drink to that. Woo! Fans, we got fans. Yeah. 
Oh, God, that's just, like, incredible. Did you ever think that you'd have a fan, Ed? Like, fans, fans? Like I got a, f- I got, I got a, like I got a fan in, 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 my, uh, in my bedroom, and it, it blows cool air on me. That's possibly too much information. What, uh, what location precise? No, never mind. We're not going there. We're not going there. Okay. Um, okay, so we want to talk a bit about uh, the bounce, the reversal in the stock market today. It's a I nice mean, one, yeah. It's like this, this volatility, it's like it's almost crazy, like 5% one day, 6% another day. It's like, I know, I know. It's quite, I, quite amazing. My, my list, I have a, a list I think I've mentioned before of 36. Mm-hmm. Uh, page and most of them are up. In fact, I'm going to look at them right now. I'm going to tell you how many are, are down and how many are unchanged. Okay. Of, out of 36. So we've got one, two, three, four unchanged. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine are down and the rest are up. So okay. four and nine. So, so that's two thirds are, two thirds are up. Why don't we, uh, why don't you give me your technical analysis expertise on this chart here? Uh, we've got organogram up, and it is—it's uh, showing a little green on the day. Yeah. It says, or sorry, this is so. This is all one day. This is just one day. Yeah. Yeah. So, one one day charts, you know, it just tells you, you know, what what they were what they're doing, but. So it's uh, this I, is the I'd six like month a, look. Yeah, six month. I like that six month look. <clears throat> One point six. Whoa. Let's see here. Survey says, like everybody else, they've lost a bit of market cap. Um. So do, this this bounce Ed, on a Friday. That's, what does it mean? Uh, well, you know we've technically come from speaking, a, of course. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to answer your uh, question by saying that we've come. We were extremely oversold like we the, the it was just drifting 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 finally everybody gets tired of the, of the same thing over and over again so they try something else hmm they're going away for the weekend <laughs> like you get tired of working every day so by, by saturday you say i'm not working today yeah like for instance you're not working tomorrow actually i am actually i am going to do some work like tomorrow. i said I have some work some people tomorrow. like to work right through the weekend <laughs> well, it's not that i really like to it's just i'm actually you know what i'm doing tomorrow I'm going to Niagara on the Lake, renting a house down by the tomorrow? river. Really? And just going to hang out, walk the dogs, and do a bunch of writing. Writing? Writing. Yeah, I haven't been keeping up with my writing duties here do at my Do you find Minnesota. talking more exciting than writing? Um, well, I find it's uh, more difficult to express oneself in a continuous, structured fashion while talking as opposed to while writing. Because writing, you know, you re- rewrite it, you go back to the top, you start again, you go, uh, I kind of screwed up there. This doesn't really make sense. Right. You got to reword it. So writing's always, uh, you know, writing's more work, but you always get your point across much better, generally, generally speaking. Maybe you should have wrote that to me. You know, th- but here's the thing about talking, is talking's way quicker. Yeah, I like talking. Exactly. There's nothing else to do and except talkies. flap your lips and, I, uh, you know, move your tongue around in your I mouth. I can't think of anything easier to do than talk. <laughs> and you're good at it. Well, thank it's, you. Every once in a while you break out into tongues even. That's, I mean, involuntarily. I, I'm, I, that's a divine inspiration. That, that so tongue, it's the Pentecostals that... The tongue action. The tongue action is a divine inspiration. Now... Ed, you've just opened up the door for a dark and mysterious sort of peregrination into uh, the depths huh? of the depraved, or shall we say, the the excited, the, the excitable the, human mind of Ed Molesky. Well, I'm just saying that uh, it could be anybody's mind, really. Oh, right. Anybody gets excited at the sound of a... <laughs> just saying. Just, what, just the way it is. Just the way it is. So... Uh, Wow. Do you think, I, we had Matt Bottomley on here yesterday, yeah. and Matt was saying, he's calling, first of all, he's calling an $11 target on, uh, on uh, Aurora, like in writing, which I thought was, wow, that's pretty ballsy, hang your, hang your, hang, talk about hanging it out there, stocks trading that ballsy. seven bucks, hang ballsy, whoa, oh. boy, we just wow. can't help ourselves with those puns, can we? Yeah, yeah, I know. I know, it's the sexual know. Innu- innuendo around here that really, uh, you know, has, has some of our co- Workers uncomfortable, I think. Really? Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure. You know, there's nobody's sure about everybody's sexual orientation, and you know, their own included, maybe. And they're thinking about experimenting if they are, and 
you know. Experimentation, yeah. folks. So I'm here just, we are. All I'm trying to say, Ed, is... Here we in, are at the laboratory. Enough, enough with the speculation <laughs> on the dark... Never mind. This is getting... This is still G-rated. We're going to yeah, keep it's, it G-rated. It's still Friday afternoon, though. All right. So... So, like, you, you, did we notice yesterday that, that High Hampton got down to 50 cents? Mm. What's it at today? It opened at 54... And close, it's currently 55 to 56. Oh, having a bit of a recovery. They just presented at a conference uh, in, down in Muskoka. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. You, you John Bev and uh, we got a show to do. Grit Capital. Grit Capital. You know yeah. them? Yeah, yeah, I know Jean Bev and, uh, and of course, the lovely and talented Nicole. Nicole yes. Marchand. Nicole Marchand. Yeah, she's a uh, very pleasant lady. Yeah, I, I don't know. We, well, you know, if we would have had more conversation, maybe they wouldn't have wanted us there, but it sure would have been fun to do the show from their thing up in the Muskoka. I was thinking of, of shooting up there and doing the show from there. But, you know, they, here's the problem. It all boils down to how, well, how good is the Wi-Fi, doing the Skype remotes. Like, so we had, we had an earlier Skype today with say Justin it, B. The Sky promotes or the Skype Skype. The remote? Skype, the Skype the remote. The Skype remote or the Sky promote? Sky Pie. Sky Pie. <laughs> Yeah, the Skype signal is what d determines whether we have a feasible connective connection or not. I would think the Oxley's uh, Wi-Fi up would four be... cents today. Oxley, no, don't say. Weed, that means it's at eighty four. Weed is flying. Weed is flying <laughs> off the shelves. I hear. In California, did you know? Oh, so we were talking to Justin B lately, our West Coast correspondent. Yes. And unfortunately, they switched rooms and uh, they didn't bring their microphones they, with they, them or something. Do you think they're still talking to us? They, they... No, no. We, we told them we had to cut and, uh, you know, we have to. I'm sure Justin might still be watching, but, uh, yeah, we have a limited amount of time that we can allocate to each thing because we got to keep this thing within the uh, prescribed hour. Right. And uh, hour and a half. So, uh, yeah. Um, Interesting. Do you think, so Matt Bottomley was saying that there's all these value catalysts in the market yet to come that's going to continue to lift all boats. And he says leading up to September and October, sure. especially when the legalization actually starts to kick, that there's going to be a bit of an accumulation phase. Right. What do you make of that, Ed? Well, you, you, you know, I, I, in a very general sense, I look at the value market capitalization of something like Aurora. Mm -hmm. And I say, okay, if you're just looking at it from a, uh, an earnings cash flow perspective, which you really can't do, but if you did, you'd say it was overvalued. So maybe a lot of those things, even though there's things that are gonna come out, uh, are already baked in the cake. Already baked in the cake, Ed, you the... <laughs> The analogy king, the meta master of metaphors. The master of metaphor. M O M. Yeah, the Memo. mom, <laughs> Mr. Mom. Mr. Mom. See, we needed a new handle for you, Mr. Mom. Yeah, um, you know who else is going to have a show on our show? Her who? own show. Who is Allison Gordon, CEO of Forty Eight North Cannabis? And what's her show going to be about? Well, she's very tightly connected to the growing community in Canada and the United States. She knows all these famous growers who are famous for growing wicked kick-ass weed and for creating great strains with very certain attributes that some might find desirable. You know what I'm saying? Really? <laughs> yes. No. Yes, he has. No, I, I, I met her briefly yesterday, but uh, so she wants to do, like, how often would she do her show? I don't know. We haven't got clear, we, we don't have clarity on that yet. But I would think we would start with an hour, an hour per week. She's going to bring her own guests and, uh, right. you know, she's going to So you, you won't be on the show. I will not be on the show. And, and I'll be in the control room working the, the knobs and, and putting in the little animations. Working and, what knob? <laughs> <laughs> Edward, G-rated, G-rated. Okay, so and so she's going to she's going to have her own show. She's really? going to be more content. So we got Donnie Greco, we got you, we got her, we got Meisner. Right. We're starting to flesh out the talent pool here a little bit. Yeah, this is this is competition. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna actually we're gonna have to be more on our toes. We're gonna have to try to make sure that our show remains like the anchor cornerstone. Yeah. Segment. Now, so if something. Oh, I'm not even. You know what we there. should do? We should start a uh, a competition. Everybody puts money into an investment account, and we, the shows compete with one another for uh, you know got to be cannabis companies and see who's done the best. In Why six don't we months. do a uh, uh, 
what do they call those things when you raise money uh, on online? Like you call it a uh, ICO, initial coin offering. Initial coin offering. What? Crowdfunding. 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 That's crowdfunding it. Crowdfunding from it. the control room. Thank you, Fraser. See now, if we had the camera there, we would cut to you saying crowdfunding. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And everybody would know that we're not just making this. Can we stuff do a up. crowdfunding like you and I, for instance? Sure. Send us money, please. <laughs> there. I just crowdfunded. I don't think anybody's going to send us anything because what do we need money for? We actually sit in a pretty vaunted position here. One might say in capital markets. Vaunted? In that vaunted. Or vaulted. Well, <laughs> vaulted if you leap over it. Vaunted if you sit upon it. Really. <laughs> Is that avant-garde? I, I, I don't know, but my point being that we talk to, everybody comes to this building to raise money. Right. Everybody comes this, to this building to ring the bell. We get to meet uh, a better than the average lion's share of those people who come onto our show and tell us about what they're doing and we decide whether we're going to throw some money in or whether it's uh, too far gone for us or whatever and we, you know, that's the... Uh, that's the end did of that? You, did you know that's what we do here? <laughs> This is this is what we call This is Epiphany Friday. <laughs> this is what's called the upside of being a minus You know there's one. a there's a there's a day in the Roman Catholic uh, church huh. called the Epiphany. Really? Yeah. Like it's uh, like December 6th. That's my birthday by the way. That is, was Is it December 6th? No, it's I no, think I'm it, just saying for example, is it related to a specific date? Like I think December it is. 6th? I think. I really? think it is, yeah. The and what happens in an Epiphany by definition? E you become enlightened. Enlightened? Yeah. Like more enlightened than I become each day as I look at my portfolio. <laughs> you, you, you become lighter. <laughs> enlightened, yeah. Because if exactly. you sell it, you'll, you, you can easily carry that cash around with you because there's not much left. I have not actually taken cash out of a bank machine now for, I'm counting the days because I've just noticed that it's been probably 14 days now. And this is the first time I think I've ever gone 14 days without taking cash. Why? Out. You took out a lot of cash well, last time. Well, <laughs> no, no, I'm out of cash and I didn't take any more out, nor for the first time did I feel any urge to take out cash. You don't need cash anymore. I'm happy with my cards. You're one of these guys that you can just walk into a place and they just say everything, it's on the house. The panhandlers James, are going to have to get debit house. machines if they want a donation yeah. from me now. I mean, that's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, no coins, certainly no coins. Coins just go into a dark drawer and uh, for desperate days when your the market crashes and you've been sold out of your entire position to cover your lousy bets on margin and next thing you know, they're reclaiming the house and you're out on the street and you're like, where did I put those damn toonies? Holy smokes. <laughs> so that's, that's a very dark a, scene. That's a, you know, that, I think but we, we're, we're going to have one, another one of those. Really? Yeah, I think that the, that the global financial picture I mean, we don't really talk too much on the macroeconomic side. So far... I, that's another specialty of mine. Macroeconomics? Yes. Oh, excellent. Do you like to have that with breakfast or lunch? Shaken or stirred? Vodka? No vodka. Gin? Gin or vodka? Macro, macro. Macro, macro. That sounds like a new uh, like like, yeah, DJ. They, it's a new, new band. New band. Yeah. Have you heard of Greta Van Fleet, by the way? Greta Van Fleet, control room, if you can pull up a clip of Greta Van Fleet to play briefly for us at some point. This is the second control room unexpected challenge of the day from the floor out here at Midas Letter. What if they're all sleeping in there? They won't be sleeping. How can they be sleeping? We got them on their toes every, yeah, okay. every minute of every second. Greta we're Van like, Fleet, we're all no, over the place. I, I'm curious. What okay. kind of music is Well, Greta Van Fleet is the name of the band. There's actually nobody named Greta Van Fleet, or, um, unless the band's name is references somebody specific who is not in the band. The band is four guys and they play pretty structurally similar songs to Led Zeppelin in the early days. And the kid who sings has a very much Jimmy. a Robert Plant voice. Jimmy Page played guitar. Robert Plant was the singer. Oh. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's, Ed's I'm, rock and I'm roll say, faux pas. That, that doesn't sound like Jimmy Page. <laughs> Well, <laughs> Jimmy Page is a guitar. So Robert Plant a actually Acapello? acknowledges Acapello? that this guy. Acapello? Acapello? Yeah. Acapello fight? No. If we look, here they are. Okay, let's see. Let's see here. Let's let me decide for myself. Wow.
Okay, that's enough before our audience thinks we've turned into a... Now, so, what do you think? Well... Is that not... Like, that kid has some pipes on him. And, you know, no. he's, he's get, getting all kinds of criticism because he sounds just like Robert Plant, and their songs sound just like Led Zeppelin. To which I say in their defense, if you can master the sound of Led Zeppelin so early in your career and write songs that are structurally right. loosely based on Led Zeppelin, right. and you can blast out that kind of vocals, congratulations, boys. I can't wait till you get tired of the Zeppelin and graduate musically because, I mean, that's some early talent right there. Like, I, a friend of mine turned me on to them. We were supposed to go down and see them down here at the, uh, what's the big club on the water? Rebel. Anyways, for whatever reason, we didn't end up going, but I ended up looking up Greta and, Van Fleet. And, and they were here. And they were here. They were here for like two nights or something. But, uh, yeah, quite a, uh, quite a talent. Anyways, it's not <laughs> generally that we uh, talk about uh, rock and roll. Yeah. But I think we should start. You know, you know I'll tell you a, a little music that I've uh, become sort of attached to over the years is a, a composer out of the States by the name of Philip Glass. Oh, yeah, the guy who shot his wife in the head. Is that he, the guy? He shot his wife in the head. Isn't that the guy who was doing an imitation of the uh, famous moment where Rock, William S. Burroughs shot his wife in the no. head? Or shot an apple off her head? Or did, she, did he shoot her in the head? I no, I don't, I don't think that's the same guy, is it? No, it's not the same guy, but Philip Glass... Or was he charged with murder? I don't know. We're going to have to go to the Jeepers We're creepers. We're going to the Google machine but to find it, out what the hell we're talking best, about. His music is best described as minimalist music. Like yeah. it's very, very repetitive and but very. Philip Glass. Let's see what Google. I, I mean, Wikipedia has to say about Philip Glass. Born January 31, 1937, American composer, widely regarded as one of the most influential musicians of the late 20th century. However, Glass. Uh, instead, or sorry, Glass's work has been described as minimal music, having similar qualities to other minimalist composers such as Lamonte Young, Steve Reich, and Terry Riley. However, Glass has instead described himself as a composer of music with repetitive structures, which he has helped evolve stylistically. I it, find it, his it's music's very, very hypnotic. It, it, it has a, it can put you in a trance. It really is spectacular music i'm just but just, wasn't there some issue with uh, some crime and crime well, of passion involved i don't know am i confusing him with somebody else yeah that yeah. could be Let's robin see. hood i think or something recording work music for film criticism wow this guy has done a lot he's he's right he's top of the food chain okay so anyways you like this guy yeah, well if, if you know you 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 showed me something in music and i showed you something in music that's true you know. so we just had a musical segment within our segment that's quite impressive. Yeah, very impressive. Yeah. Um, I'm just wondering from the control room, do we have any other uh, of our pre-records ready to go or not yet? Not today. No, I don't think we do. Yeah. That's it's Friday. Uh, you know what? People want to go. Pe 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 do you think if we, if we went to the John and Sons early that we could, you know, pull a fast one on our viewers and, you know, yeah. be drunk? Have, have a couple of beers and gone before they show up? Yep. <laughs> I think we should. Are we that kind of tosser? No, we're not. It's 4 o'clock. No. It is highly unlikely that we would ever leave John and Sons before 6 if we got there at 4. Just saying. I agree. But in a happy hour, there's a happy hour there. What? You get, what uh, is happy you get, hour? You get uh, oysters for a buck fifty a shuck. A buck fifty a shuck. You know, that's nowhere near as good as the buck a shuck. Not a buck a shuck. That's actually quite a... Not, but not a deuce a shuck either. But that's quite a non-competitive rate in downtown Toronto. Buck a fifty a shuck? A buck fifty a shuck. You know what they shuck. normally are? Three fifty. No, but there's always, almost any day of the week, somewhere in Toronto where you can get buck a shuck oysters. There's a that's place... That's a favorite of Meisner's. Meisner likes the buck a shuck. Meisner is always... He brought over a bottle of tequila to my house and said, now I'm leaving that here. Don't drink it until I come over with the oysters. And we're going to have buck a shuck. The lovely and talented Suzanne Garcia just graced us with her petrubic. What was this term that the earlier word that meant? Pulchritude. The, her pulchritic. Petrubic. Her pul pul How's your memory? Pulchritic. How's your memory? <laughs> Short term memory. Sorry. What was that, Dave? Pete? Frank? George? Oh, I, I got a caller coming in here. <clears throat> oh, from England. Oh, you, you taking? <laughs> we're taking calls on the show now. Yeah. Hey, that could be fun. Although we got the comment thing going. Suzanne, anyways, was here, and she said we have to look at the YouTube comments. 
for something. Let's okay. see. And uh, apparently somebody's trying to communicate with us through YouTube. So let's just survey says over to the dashboard. Let's see here. Oh, you know what the problem is? is you know, this chat window is so small. Yeah, we didn't, we didn't address Doug, Dougie Ford's plan. Doug Ford's plan? Yeah. Ontario's he wants to go to privatize. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's an interesting. You're aware that Doug Ford wants to scrap the Ontario Liquor Control Branch and privatize not just cannabis. Is it just cannabis or cannabis and liquor? Just cannabis. So he wants to privatize wow. cannabis sales in you, you Ontario. Know, you, know what, you know, there's always there's sort of the right wing and there's the left wing. And I have to say that Doug Ford is a bit of a right wing guy. Like his thinking is, you know, huh. take a, the, I'm not really familiar with his thinking on the matter. Well, if anybody that says privatize means to take the power out of the government and, and give it to the people. Right? Right. Because they, well, they usually do it cheaper. That doesn't well, mean it's better. I'm not saying that. Well, so let's see. Where is uh, alcohol sales privatized to retail? We know it is in Alberta. We know it is in BC. Yeah. I don't know about Saskatchewan, Manitoba. Nick. Ontario, it is not. It's very tightly controlled by the government. Right. Quebec, you can buy it in, in grocery stores, which apparently yeah. I'm told you can here now. You can and, buy you can buy beer and wine in grocery stores. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. And yeah. in the Maritimes, I only drink in bars, so I can't help you there. Right. Right. Because <laughs> they're so friendly. How can you go to the Maritimes and sit in your hotel room drinking alone? Like, I drink alone. Can't do it. Can't do it. So what do you think that the chances are that Doug Ford is going to be able to pull this off within his four-year yeah. term? Or perhaps he's going to actually do eight years. We don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Yeah. I well, think it's speculation at this point, right? But if it, he's, he's thrown it out there. He, he wants to, uh, you know, do this. Uh, I think he's undermining his own value proposition and that of all governments who right. have, you know, we've kind of brought them along on this argument that, you know, you're going to get so much in taxes. You should legalize it. It's good for you. And the government has largely bought into that. And so like, we're certainly seeing them egregiously elbow their way into the place at the table, strap on the giant feed bag and start like taking... A handful of everybody's cash just if we're smoking weed which yeah you know that's happening in california it's happening in in colorado people are upset and they're also kind of sanguine about it because it's keeping the non-official market alive and by many counts the best weed the freshest weed is always from your friendly neighborhood <laughs> illicit dealer the friendly uh, illegal dispensary. Friendly illegal dispensary. The one thing that we're going to go is interview some people in some of the illegal dispensaries here. And let's see, we're going to find out what they're thinking. Um, we're going to probably undertake this mission. Everybody's like, what? When are we doing this? What? Let's undertake this mission next week. Let's do it. Yeah. We'll go talk to some dispensary operators yeah. and, and see what their plans are. If they'll talk to us. We don't even know if they will. They won't, we don't know. We don't know. We, but we're, know, but uh, we, we, can, we can hide their identities and their location. Right. If any, any illegal dispensary operators would like to voice their opinion in an identity obscured format yeah. on our show, let us know because we'd like to have you. We can get that technology that garbles your voice. Well, we'd probably have to do it off premises. Well, they'd be speaking in tongues then and nobody would understand them. But I do like it when they put on the electronic voice changer and it's like... Uh. That's supposed to keep you from recognizing the voice. Yeah. Does that happen to you, Ed, when you have the voice making the changer you, on? You now sound like uh, Dan Aykroyd. Uh, what was the movie he did with, with the big head? Like, I'm from that planet. <sighs> what? Coneheads. 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 Remember oh. Coneheads? Coneheads. You yeah, know what? I actually if you dressed want, up as If you want to see a funny movie, watch. I've seen the Coneheads. I've seen it several we times. We used to dress up every as time, and at the end, when, when he takes up golf, he, he's, you know, he, he's in that... Greetings! Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, no. We're, uh, maybe we can find... Here's the third Control Room Unexpected Challenge of the Day from the floor. Control... Can you find us a clip of the... Copyright, copyright, copyright. Copyright. We, can, we can't see a clip even? Can we play the trailer? Let's play the trailer from... By the time I Google the legality of that, 
the show, it'll be 6 o'clock and you'll... Okay, let's do it for next week. Let's do it for next week. All right, all right. Next week, we we'll look at... We want Coneheads. We'll look at the Coneheads. Mars Attacks. Freedom Unleashed says the movie was called Mars Attacks. Well, that's another movie. Do we have any intel on Eve and Company, also known as Natural Medco? They were the 34th LP in Canada, and they recently got their sales license in June. This is from a viewer whose name, or handle rather, is Ersky. E-R-S-K-I. Ersky. Do you think he's a Polsky? Ogorky? <laughs> Now we're getting communicated from by with pickles. I knew a guy. I played golf with a guy. Uh, he, he moved to Victoria Island, but his name was Erskine. Yeah, Erskine. That's a, e somewhat of a common name, isn't it? E R S K I N. He's professor of business at Western. He's yeah. retired. Yeah. And his nickname was Erskine. So when you say Erskine, I'm thinking, huh? Hey, Ersky. maybe that's him. Maybe it is. Maybe that maybe is. Is that you, Erskine? You still playing Let golf, Erskine? You playing? You playing golf, Erskine? Uh oh, English last name Erskine. He just advised. He just he, we're in, we're in live communication with the Ersky unit right now. Greetings, Ersky, from the set of Midas Letter. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Welcome to the show. I am from an Earth. I think we have to disguise our voices if we're going to talk to cannabis users online. Oh, I don't think they'll have any problem. Yeah. I think if you do enough cannabis, you don't know who's talking <laughs> to you. Exactly. Okay, everybody, everybody watching, consume cannabis now. Yeah. We'll meet back here in exactly one hour All right. and giggle like crazy for yeah. two more hours, yeah. and then we'll go out and drink. Let's have a let's go get a. Then cold. we'll all let's, meet at John and Sons and start ahead. testing vodkas. Then we'll fall down on the floor, and it'll be Monday, and we'll be back at mm -hmm. work again. It'll be like everybody back on your heads. <sighs> Cone heads. Cone Jeez. heads. That's a good one. Yeah, and Mars Attacks was pretty funny too. That was with uh... Mars Attacks. I don't know if I ever saw that. You know, yeah. I'm horrible about remembering the names of movies or who was in them. I can remember storylines, but I can't remember the name of it. Mars Attacks. It. I'm thinking that was a uh, very famous actor was in that one. Oh, yeah? Freedom Unleashed is uh, just punched in a comment. So, hey, Freedom Unleashed, you're the one who brought up Mars Attacks. Who was in that? Let's see, well, there, Let's there see if he a, knows. There's a lot of people, uh, but I think, I was going to say Jack Nicholson, but it's not Jack. can't be Jack Nicholson, can it? Why not? Couldn't it be? At Jack Nicholson, Freedom Unleashed confirmed. It's Jack Nicholson. Oh, woo. Yeah. You need a prize for that. We need a prize for you. Yeah. If you can be at you know John what? and Sons at 5 o'clock, we're going to buy you a prize. <laughs> or give you a prize yeah. from our travels. Woo. We'll give you a prize that you can't take home. Yeah. Ooh. yeah, we don't even know where these people are, do we? No, we don't. No, it should don't. say where they're from. Where are you guys from? Visual Adrenaline says Jack as well. Freedom Unleashed, where are you from? What's their story? Are you going to be down at John and Sons later? Where exactly are you? How much beer are we going to have to buy at 5 o'clock? That's what I want to know. Anyways, uh, yeah. You know, that could be a, a thing where we actually meet with our, oh, sorry. with our audience every once in a while and have a chat about, you know, different topics, what's working, what they like, what they yeah. don't. We buy them around and maybe some oysters, and uh, then we get the hell out of there and stiff them with the bill. I mean, then we pick up the tab. <laughs> Jeez. What kind of host? What kind of host are we? That's the antithesis of host. You know where that Mark, one came from? Host. Host. Yeah. No. Chips. Chips. Yeah. Remember host chips? Hostess chips. Well, they were, they were, originally they were the host, and then it became hostess. Do you know that the host is a good Indian restaurant in Toronto? <laughs> bing, bing, bing. We're just all over the map today. <laughs> you're, you're losing me. <laughs> He's losing me, folks. I'm losing it. I think I'm losing it. 408, we've got 12 minutes until the magic cannabis product of the day. And I think today we're going to demonstrate some CBD and THC tablets in a wonderful concoction of 2.5 milligrams each. Each. And they work. And, and we'll tell you why they work at 420. Why do they work? Because they're 2.5 milligrams of THC. Is that a lot? We were supposed to tell them at 420. No, 2.5 milligrams isn't a lot, right. I would think. Right. But uh, I can tell you that 2.5 milligrams is, uh, is just right for a solid working day. I had, I had three great meetings today. This is the second day that I've actually been kind of under the influence while working. And, uh, right. you know, it's... Not legally. Not, not illegally. No. No, I'm no. a patient. 
You didn't know I was a patient? Yeah. I'm a patient. Where's my IV bottle? I take my IV bottle out just for the show. But yeah, from here, I'm going via John and Sons back to the hospital where I'm a patient. Mm. What kind of patient? Mm. And you're... (laughs) I open the door for you. He leaves that beautiful dangling morsel of perfect entry. Patient. Untested. Are you patient? I'm a patient. Oh, you're you're a patient. I'm a patient. Sort of not an adjective. I'm a self-medicating you're a, patient. You're a noun. No, you're, you're an adjective patient. No. Well, I'm patient. Just look how long it's taken for marijuana to get legal. Are you a patient? Legal. Patient. That's what I'm trying to say. No, as a patient, I'm generally not patient. But I, in general, I am patient because all one needs to do is consider the timeline from when I first started smoking marijuana to the time it became illegal in my country of birth. And that is right there, the epitome of patience. Really? Yeah. The epitome? The epitome of patience. Waiting in your entire life for something to happen. Is that not patience? And then, and, and soft, and with grace. Did you ever see the play Waiting for Godot by... Uh, I have seen a couple of versions of that play. What do you think? Uh, pretty, pretty amazing. I'm still game. waiting. What's, what was the guy's name? What was the guy's name? The guy who, they, who, who was wrote, waiting? Wrote it, who wrote it. Oh, it was uh, David Mamming, no? No. No, no. This is Irish. This is a famous Irish guy. No, I thought it was a Frenchman. Okay. Waiting for Godot and craps tapes. No, that's a Frenchman. End game. Oh no, it is an Irish guy. Okay, it's, let's find it's, out. We'll it's ask famous. Google. It's he's world famous wait, wait, guy. Wait, the we won't theater, look it up. The theater of the absurd. Let's see if anybody on the comments can get it. Nobody's really commenting on the Facebook machine. Be- Be- Beckett. There it is. Thomas Beckett? Beckett? Beckett. Samuel Beckett. The, the famous Beckett from Ireland, yeah. Is he the guy who wrote As I Lay Dying? I don't know, but he also wrote something called the Endgame and, and, and Craps Tapes and Waiting for Godot, and they're all about the absurdity of our existence. Hmm. It's very, very, very deep stuff. Deep, deep. Probably too deep for Me. You, you and I. <laughs> yes. I'm just, I'm just about to have a start a nap. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, Thomas Beckett, As I Lie Dying, that was an incredible book. Yeah, I was he's... wondering to see if anybody on the, uh, on the comments would say anything, but Waiting for Godot. G-O-D-O-T. Yeah. yeah waiting Played for... by Samuel Beckett, in which two characters, Vladimir, Didi, and Estragon, Gogo, wait for the arrival of someone named Godot, who never arrives. And while they are... And while, while waiting, they engage in a variety of discussions and encounter three other characters. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's a very, um, that's a play that a lot of different groups do with uh, their own little twist on it. I've seen some really funny yeah, ones. Yeah, I know. It's, it's funky. Th- the theater of the absurd. Like what we're doing right now. Sort of. <laughs> ACB, up 13 cents. CVSI, up 20 cents. You know, they're up, but they're not flying. No. No, they're not flying. <clears throat> but that's uh, that's a good lift, you know. This is so. This is okay. So this is one of the things that I think we want to watch out for. On most market days, when the market is up, the large cap stocks generally Tweed has gone up the most, and when it drops off, Tweed goes down the least. So looking at that as a fund manager, <coughs> that would make me want to own Tweed. But I'm noticing today that Aurora is up 3.36% and yeah. Tweed is only up 2.41%. This is the first time that that pattern has been interrupted, in my observation, over the last two weeks. Well, according Meaningful to, or meaningless? Yeah, that's delayed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah that's See, 20 minutes it, delayed. So, so now ACB is 698 on the close. That's the actual, that's the fact, Jack. It's uh, up 1.9, so there goes your theory. Uh, Oh, just, yeah, you just you just took the wind right out I, of my sails did I there. Pee on your parade. You just flattened my tire. I you just flat- you just you just you just ruined my my uh, <laughs> my what am I trying to say? I don't know what you're. My to souffle. Say. You just opened okay, the oven door. I'm going to read souffle. something to you. Okay. 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 You got okay. six minutes. Okay. I want to read this to you, and okay. I want you to tell me. All right. Uh, Okay, I want you to tell me what this means to you, right. okay? And, and I, you know, I, I, I should have paid more attention to electricity, okay? 
Okay, that's that's an interesting. All right, preamble. so, so we're, you, would you agree the world's going to become go more electric as time goes on? Would you you think that's a good, a fair statement? Well, electricity is nothing more or less than the transportation of solar energy. All energy forms on Earth are in origin solar in nature. Electricity is just one of the ways to transport that energy. Right. Solar being another way to transport the energy from the sun to the Earth. But once it gets to the Earth, we have yet to find a way to directly harness solar, yeah. except in the case of warming oneself out in the sun. Right. So, so I want to. I just want to. So I think that, I think that there's going to be an increase over time in the amount of electricity transported over electricity, amount of energy transport transported in electrical form. Spit it out. And uh, yeah, so I do believe that. Now, why why do you ask me that? Well, because there's a company that I've uh, heard about called Xro Technologies. XRO. XRO. Now you own shares in this as well as, as I, I, I I I do have some shares. Oh, good, okay. Good. And, By and way of disclosure. They just good they to just know. they just finished the financing. They so just finished the face financing. Vanilla Face says hydropower don't come from the sun. There's a debate we can have. Sorry, let's go back to that. <laughs> well, ultimately it does. It does. Because right. if it, without the sun there'd be no earth. Right. And consider the sources of uh, of uh, of um, hydro. I mean, it's like water rushing over a creek because of gravity, gravity and wind Absolutely. and sun and you erosion. Know, you know and and it, it, it's been said too, they say like, for instance, a tree is the sun's energy stored. Yeah. And so, as so is if food. you light it up, you release that energy. Yeah. As is food. Uh, everything is. Everything. Well, all, all matter is yeah. combined with... Although, although... Although they say that the you know the, the center of the Earth it's it's molten and it's hmm. very hot. Hmm. So Have you that, been? Yeah, well, <laughs> once or twice. Yes. <laughs> I used was, to think that if the sun hot, disappeared, if the sun disappeared, yeah, the Earth would disappear immediately. But apparently, it would it would mm -hmm. hang on for a while because of the natural heat that's inside. Yeah, stored stored solar energy. But gravity, the... you know, and and so a star is just just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger and finally it ignites. Mm -hmm. Yeah, have you ever watched, uh, who's the professor from the UK who has that show, um, The Amazing Universe? What's his name, The Amazing Universe? Brian, Dr. Brian Cox. And this guy paints the picture that the universe is moving farther and farther apart. Yeah. Like yeah. 14 billion years, it'll be cold and dead and there'll be nothing left and that'll be the end of the universe. And I'm just thinking, Fuck, that is so depressing. Fuck. Fuck. No, no. I'm, I'm pulling out the C and the K today, Ed, okay. because that's just, that's just so depressing. And I thought, well, if the thing started with the Big Bang, and there's all these black holes out there gobbling everything up, then yeah. aren't all the black holes going to gobble up everything? If everything that a yeah. black hole encounters goes into the black hole and becomes compressed to the highest level possible, isn't that the source of the anomaly or the... Yeah whatever it was that actually preceded the Big Bang. So I don't That's think... That's what I think Stephen Hawking talked about. He said that there was several, there's been ba Big Bangs yeah. probably... I think it's a cycle. Uh, it, and it happens in multiple is, dimensions. Everything like, else is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I don't buy into Brian Cox's depressing version no, of the No, no, but, but, but you know what? The, the universe is actually accelerating mm -hmm. apart now. Right. But... Maybe it's being sucked into other things that we don't, you know, who the hell knows? Well, this is the thing, though. If, I mean, it's the simple math that I don't understand. If the black hole is eating everything in its sight and everything that it yeah. encounters is pulled into it, well, then aren't we slowly being all sucked into these black holes yeah. incrementally? Yeah. Cause and, yet, and, yet, and yet they say that uh, a billion years from now, for instance, we may not be able to see stars because they've expanded away. Hmm. Uh, it, it's, it's, listen. Let's just enjoy the time we have together, You know what? I think we, we should, we should probably uh, smoke a little reefer. <laughs> it's not October 17th yet, Ed. We cannot do that. Okie dokie. We cannot do that. But if you're a patient... Okay, so to, let me just read this to you, okay? All just right. this one thing, right. okay? Because I right. am a shareholder. All but, right. But it says here, the technology... Okay, XRO is a Vancouver-based company commercializing patented technology designed to advance... Existing rotating electric machines. Okay, here we go. 
The technology enables motor and generator systems to operate more efficiently, providing benefit to sustainable and renewable electricity generation markets. How much more efficiently? What's the range? I don't know. I'm the just, I'm, that I'm, just is? I'm just wetting everyone's appetite. Yeah. Because I, I, I'm being told by certain people that have, uh, have done well in the market. Yeah. That Similar this is to on XRO, the, eh? We're going to throw that one on the watch list. This, this one's got a potential here. All right. And the very, throw it on the watch list. You know, and they just raised some money. And so the stock is at a slight premium to the funding. Yeah. And, and, uh, uh, well, your friend, you know, you know who says to say hello. <laughs> okay. your, is your, is your well, Kyle De, De Young? Oh yeah, Kyle. Yeah, he said he knows you well. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, of course he does. We're in. Uh, well, we've done many things peripherally and yeah, circumstantially. His father is Davidy. Yeah, is that E A T O N? E A T O N. Yeah. He wasn't one of the Eatons, was he? Well, he is one of the Eatons. Yeah, he's still alive. I mean, buddy. Is that one of the famous Eatons from Tales, Toronto? Rumors Timothy, of his death are largely exaggerated. Timothy Eaton's his father? No, he's not one of those Eatons. Oh, one of those Eatons. Yeah. Um, you know, I've never asked him, but I, and he's never mentioned it. And he's probably, if he was, he probably wouldn't really be too interested in telling you about that because he's really not that kind of a guy. He's just a self-deprecating. He's a good guy to drink with and travel with. Is he? Yes. Sort of like had. you and I. Kind of like you and I. Let's Wherever go. we go, it's a barrel of Why don't you ask him? Let's, let's go. Let's all go together. Let's, go. let's take a trip. Let's take a trip. Road trip. I think we should go down to California, and we should go hang out with Justin, and we should go, you know, first we'll school him on his, you yeah, know, his yeah, production yeah. chops. He wasn't wearing sunglasses today, was he? No, no. In fact, he did a great effort, and we have to, I'm going to have a chat with uh, Justin. If you're still watching, I'm going to give you a call, and we have to have a chat about, you know, some of the... Some of the limitations of what we can do with you, and some of the you know some of the preparation we have to uh, expect from you, and also we'll talk about a whole bunch of other things like how we help this help you help us help you. Get it? Help Let us me help, help you. you. Help me help you. Help me help you. Let me help you. Help me help you. Help me help you. Help me. <laughs> sounds like sounds like we're rappers now. Help me. Help me with your rhythm stick. No, that was Hit Me. Hit Remember, me with your you rhythm ever, stick. Were you a fan of Ian Dury? Is that who it was? Yeah, hit Ian Dury. With hey, your control rhythm room, stick. here's number four. Can you find us uh, a clip of Ian Dury? Hit me with your rhythm stick. Right, right. That was a classic when I was in school. We used to uh, bang our heads to you, that show. You know what another classic was? Uh, Village Farms halted at 1.16 p.m. Whoop, 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 whoop. What's going on? Let's go see. 5.19 halted up 10 cents on 311,000 shares. What's going on with Village Farms? Should we call them right now? Market's closed. Funky, Let's call them. Funky Cold Medina. You remember that one? I won a dance contest to a Funky Cold Medina song. I shit you not. Monkey, funky funky cold, cold Medina. Eh. That song, James. Please load it. Please load the credit card. Wait a sec. This this is the now, and this is Ryan now asking me to load the credit card. Oh boy, three oh eight at p.m. Okay. Oh, please load the credit. Card. Who's that? It's it's uh, it's a, it's the gentleman Ryan who is handling all of our uh, marketing programs. So we're marketing extensively to build a bigger audience. To you know. Bring in more advertisers and right. companies and everything to right. make the show more interesting. So we're spending like right now ten thousand bucks a day to increase the audience. And so what they do is like we're doing it through Facebook, through YouTube, through uh, who else are we use? And we're doing all these different things. Anyways, they whack the credit card. And so my credit card, you know, ten thousand bucks a day. I have to have a chat with the bank and make them bump it up because it's one of those prepaid ones because I don't like to use a normal credit card online, which I'm also not a big believer in credit anyways, but long-winded story short, we get calls, please load the, please pay off your credit card because we need to keep going on the marketing program. Anyways. Do they want to keep sucking money out of you? Yes, yes, something like that. So I'm gonna look up Bernie Hertel here. Let's give Bernie a call right now and see if we can have a chat with oh, him informally. It's past 420. Past 420. Suzanne, where's the uh, tablets? Bring them. Bring them out. You can't. Okay. Shall I go get them? Can we get Bernie Hortel on the phone and find out why they're halted? See if he'll tell us. Bernie, if you're listening, 
Why are you halted? What's going on? Buyout? Are you taking somebody over? Is Aurora taking a run at you? Sorry. All right, Ed. Oh, you're just going to hand them off. Let's uh, bring in the pills. Yeah, yeah. These were delivered to us via a care package. This is a product that's coming out on the market that is not yet available, uh, generally. These are actually replicas of the product, but this is what the product will look like. 250 milligrams CBD, 250 milligrams THC, not per pill, but in the whole thing. Really? Yeah. So you gotta take the whole bottle? Yeah. No. <laughs> no, there's 50 tablets, there's 250 milligrams. So what's that? Five milligrams per tablet of THC. How many, how many, how many? There's 50. So there's five milligrams of THC, five milligrams of CBD in each pill. And it's an edible and it's in the flavor of a cinnamon candy. Cinnamon? Cinnamon. 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 And when REC goes legal here, these will be available at some point in Canada. The real deal with the real stuff in it. These are just replicas. So they're not, there's nothing in there. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. We wouldn't be doing like the no, real stuff. No, 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 no. So there's no point taking no, it. No, 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 no. Well, they're just, they just put the cinnamon flavor in there, so we'll see what they taste like. Yeah. Hey. hey. Not a bad idea. Cinnamon pill. Yeah, cinnamon it's basically a cinnamon, cinnamon placebo. Amendment. It's a placebo now. But anyways, um, these were like 45 bucks in the catalog that I saw. And so, yeah. But, the, but, they were, but that was a fake $45 because there's right. nothing in them. Right. It was right. Pesos. It was a pretend transaction. It but was, I'll pretend to pay you 45 Bitcoin. for your pretend. I paid in Bitcoin. So the transaction couldn't be chased. Okay. Traced. Laced. Well, there's another way to Spaced. do it. So how many ways are there to ingest? Uh, how many holes you got? <laughs> well, I mean, really, it all comes down to how many points of entry do you have, which it could include pores. So really, right. I mean, you can put a patch on patch. that's impregnated patch with uh, CBD and or THC, and you will absorb through the skin at the rate that the skin absorbs stuff. Put it in your mouth is one faster way. If you can get it directly under your mouth tissue, that's a very rapid way to get it into the bloodstream. I think it's 17 seconds. Eating it is probably the slowest way, but one of the most efficient ways, because you actually consume every little smidgen of tea. And, it get, and once it gets into your, into your bloodstream, right? Once it... That, then you're like... That's good. Yeah. That's why people do it. Wow. They like it. Wow. They, they're, they're digging it. Do you like it? I think, well, like you like said, what? I like what? <laughs> good and funny, good and funny, good and funny, good and funny, good if you tie get along, <laughs> little doggies, it's your misfortune oh. and a little oh. mouth. You're bringing, you're bringing a tear to my eye. I can't believe I just remembered that song. We used to sing that at the end of every night when we were out partying and youngsters. That's, that's actually a great memory. I Our, wonder if it was the can can cannabinoids. <laughs> Anyways, if you enjoyed the show today, meet us at John and Sons. We'll buy you a beer if you're of age. If you're of age. If you're of age. Yeah. If you're underage, then ain't going to happen. We'll give you, a, we'll give you some we'll, cannabis or something. No. We'll have nothing for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. Like us. Subscribe. Tell your friends. We're trying to build a bigger audience because we would like to go drinking with all of our audience. We'd like to come to Texas and sample some of the Texas herb. We want to go to California. We want to sample some of the California sensamina bud from some of the original grow zones where it used to happen up there in the Emerald Triangle. I think I'm losing it. I think I should not do placebo drugs before the show. Yeah, because you, you, they're actually, you don't, you don't need the real stuff. You just need a placebo. Good enough. Thanks everybody. Okay, that's it.